Hi everybody, I'm Muhammad and I'm here with you to talk about heat transfer this time. It is one of my favorite topics and I think it doesn't need to mention that how useful this topic is. I mean, it appears in almost all engineering problems, whether it is designing a computer board or a component of a power plant like a heat exchanger, you really need to know the temperature distribution and heat transfer qualities in order to ensure an efficient design which works properly. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about heat transfer equation diffusion and solve it uh, numerically. And I think uh, if you're not familiar with heat transfer, I mean if you haven't passed the topic during your undergraduate, uh, this video will make almost no sense to you. But if it is not the case, uh, you're welcome to see and if you have found it uh, helpful, please do not forget to share and subscribe. Okay. Um, in this video, at first, I'm going to talk about heat transfer diffusion equation and how to solve it numerically, I mean, things like divergence theorem and things like that. And after that, as usual, I'm going to the MATLAB in order to show you how we can write a code to visualize all the things that we, we um, usually are taught in the class. Um, the first equation here is called a um, heat transfer diffusion equation. It is a kind of transport equation and for those of you who are not familiar with transport equation, uh, here it is. Uh, actually, uh, the theory states that uh, particles are eager to diffuse. I mean, they usually tend to move from um, areas with high density like first picture to the areas with low densities. And in order to model it, we use some um, transport equations. For example, the transport equation for heat, which tends to move from high temperatures to lower temperature, um, is heat transfer um, diffusion equation. It is a kind of famous equation. And the first term is, uh, states the change, change of properties over time. The second term is called convection term. Uh, the first term after the equal sign is conduction and the last term is source. Since we are interested in one-dimensional steady state uh, heat transfer which involves no convection, the first two terms are going to be zero and there would be no need to use partial derivatives so the gradient would turn out to d over dx. Um, the left hand side is zero and in order to solve this, uh, we need to solve this, uh, I mean the second equation, in order to gain the temperature distribution. So we take integral from both sides and distribute integral over two terms to get the fourth equation. Uh, actually, remember that um, in this video, I'm trying to give a summary I and mean, recap everything in a very compact way so I would avoid um, the basic mathematic operations uh, in order to avoid uh, getting this video lengthy. Um, first, before, before we solve the first term, I prefer to look at the second term because it is just easy peasy. Um, for the source term, rather than uh, uh, we usually assume that all particles uh, generate a specific amount of heat uh, whose total is equal to, to the total amount of heat generation in this case the s is going to be constant through the for example our one dimension bar and can be taken out of the integral so uh, its solution is easy and is shown the picture but this first term is a bit more challenging and before we get to solve it i need to uh, mention the divergence theorem um, the theory states that the accumulation of a particle into the control volume is equal to its flux over the boundaries. And since we are um, dealing with a one-dimensional uh, problem, the boundary we have only two boundaries at the left and right hand side. Uh, if, we, if we want to write the uh, divergence theorem mathematically, we can write it uh, like the fifth equation. Uh, as you, and the n is actually the normal vector to the surface and its amount at the left and right hand side are shown in the picture. And by assuming, and the gradient is actually uh, replaced with um, d dx. Uh, assuming ax equal to k dt dx, and by looking at the fourth equation here, we will see that it is exactly the divergence theorem and can be replaced with the right hand side of the fifth equation to get this equation and in order to solve it um, we know we already know that all of these uh, amounts in the parentheses are constant with respect to a so they can be taken out of the integral and we have and n um, is plus one at the right and minus one at the left so it is the reason for the uh, appearance of this minus here 
Okay, we are almost done. The only thing which has remained is some linearization. I mean, in order to solve it numerically, rather than taking derivatives, we assume that temperature difference between cells, uh, I mean, temperature variation is linearly. I mean, from left to right, um, it changed totally linearly. So we can write the uh, dt dx, I mean, we can uh, approximate it like uh, these two equations. And now it's time to solve the equation for two kinds of cells that we usually deal with. I mean the boundary cells and interior cells. For the interior, uh, we replace the, uh, our approximation and do some mathematics. We assume d equal to k over d. And we finally get this. I use these coefficients for the consistency sake. Uh, and for the left boundary, the only difference is uh, the distance between our interested point and left is half of the, uh, the interior cells and only replacing it into the uh, equa uh, into the eighth equation you will get this overall um, if we summarize all of things we all of the mathematics uh, here in this table we get al is uh, the value of al ar and all of them for the boundary left interior and the boundary at right side right hand side okay um, we use these um, coefficients to solve a system of uh, linear equations which is here I mean if you look it's a symmetric matrix AP uh, which is the coefficient of the interested point is always at the diameter and at the left we have a coefficient of left hand side and at its right we have the coefficient at the right and the other term is gonna be zero we, and the thing we need to do in the MATLAB is to uh, define and specify the value of each element of the coefficient matri matrix and then solve the system of algeb uh, algebra okay we, I now take a look at MATLAB as usual the CLC clear and close and then I get the uh, user specific amounts you can use input command but here I prefer to use some um, predefined values for the temperature at the left and right boundary uh, remember that I, I think I forgot to mention that um, we will solve this equation for non-boundary temperatures. I mean, the temperature at left boundary and right boundary is fixed and known to us. So that's the reason why we define TA at the and temperature at left hand side and TB the temperature at the right boundary. K number of nodes and L. Remember that the more the number of nodes are, um, the more accurate your uh, your solution gonna be. However, it will achieve at a high cost. I mean, if you uh, raise the numbers, the um, high value, high amount. It will take a lot of time for MATLAB or computer to solve the equation, but the result gonna be uh, obviously a bit more uh, exact. Then I define some uh, repetitive values that are likely to appear in uh, several times in my code. And now it's time to define the elements of um, coefficient matrix. First, I define a uh, um, zero matrix, I mean a matrix whose elements are all equal to zero and its size equal to its and is a square matrix equal and its size is equal to the number of nodes. For the n changing from one to the number of nodes, if it is n equal to one, which means that uh, it is the left boundary, it is this picture. Uh, left boundary, it is then n equal one, n equal two, and three. Okay. If n is equal to 1, we use the uh, coefficients uh, which are defined for the uh, left boundary, which are shown in this picture. Here, the first uh, called the first row in this table. After defining the values, it's time to specify which uh, elements of coefficient matrix should be replaced with these amounts. For example, the first term since n is 1 so and um, the first element of the coefficient matrix is gonna be equal to AP as I showed you in the last picture and the second one is gonna be equal to AR okay Okay, uh, sorry for interruption. Uh, after that, uh, we define an answer uh, matrix again, and we its values are I mean, it's a um, column matrix and its values equal to SU. 
then I define this I do the same procedure for the right boundary when the end equal to is is equal to the number of nodes I do the same procedure and lastly I do it for the uh, interior cells after defining all elements of the coefficient and uh, metrics of coefficients and metrics of answer it is time to solve the uh, system of our linear system of equation so the temperature distribution is gonna be matrix of coefficient back slash matrix of answers um, here up to here we have um, gained the temperature distribution and in order to visualize them I mean in order to show you today use show show it to the user in a, a better way I define a matrix I mean some variables T um, equal T1 T2 T3 and this and this is the how seems works it defines some uh, variables and it is a matrix for me a raw matrix and then I ask it to show the temperature for each T uh, in a discrete and way individually so I use the while uh, loop in order to uh, in order to show uh, temperatures and all the things that I did here is for sh um, showing you how we can use multiple uh, variables in one line using this uh, command uh, and I think I usually try to give you as much as uh, to familiarize you with as much as command as possible in each in one and each of my codes in order to improve your proficiency in MATLAB so this is the reason why I take the hassle of defining this while loop it is the way it shows the way we can uh, use this uh, to show multiple things here first I define that temperature that is equal to um, ch answer and remember that it should always be an a string value um, i mean all things here should be a string not the double or number and up to now if i run the code for you you will see what happens by defining this uh, command like this see let's pause it here it is T2 is, T3 is, and all of the temperatures are shown in this way because of um, uh, because of using this function uh, into this while loop. And then I'm gonna show the discrete values, I mean the temperatures, in a uh, Cartesian coordination. So first, uh, I will define. A matrix for x values and y values to store the equations in it and by using a while loop uh, it is a, something easy I won't just go deep into it and then I ask MATLAB to plot it uh, with the stars and, and using this command to show how big the stars gonna be and then I want to compare the results with the analytical uh, temperatures which are gained through experiments uh, it's analytical T um, in order, and at this part, I'm gonna verify my answers. I mean, when you run a CFD code, you, real, you should and you have to verify your answer to make sure that um, the calculations are correct. And this is the theoretical amount, I mean, the analytical amount uh, for the heat transfer in this uh, one dimension heat transfer with known temperature at both boundaries. And I will plot it as well and then run the code for you. To see what happens see although um, this red line is our analytical values and these discrete stars are the amounts uh, and values for temperature which are um, calculated numerically and if we zoom in excuse me sounds that there is a problem uh -huh. You will see that there is a discrepancy between the analytical amounts and our calculated amount, and it and it is the re and the reason for it is uh, the linearization that we did previous in our previously. Okay, and in order to compare the results, I defined a, matri a matrix and uh, and calculated the amount of analytical t at x values where the temperature is calculated previously with CFD code and then compare it in a table where it uh, shows the amount of 
f minus y value the y value is the amount and it's the value which is calculated uh, with linearization and f is the value at each x which is calculated analytically and if you see the difference is almost uh, one quarter but if you remember by raising the number of nodes to a number like 20 we would have a more accurate answer and uh, so the amount would be more close to zero uh, and you will see it is the case i mean it is almost zero by raising the number of nodes to the 20 and if i uh, zoom in you will see even here the lines and the stars are more match okay guys uh, i will leave you the code into the description in order to play around with you with it and one of the good uh, exercises can be developing my code i mean finding other ways to do the same thing uh, but using less lines and using very different commands and uh, finally if you have if you had any question please feel free to leave me a comment or give me a feedback i would be very happy and i hope this video comes handy someday for you thank you